Hello and welcome to the Plone Newsroom. Uh, this is a podcast about what's new in the world of Plone. Plone is a open source content management system written in Python. And we too are part of this community that uh, manages and writes Python. This is our fourth episode, a bit festive if you see that on YouTube. Uh, my listening, um, you're listening to me, Philip Bauer from Munich and my co-host, is Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. Hi, Philip. Yes. So if you listen to this uh, podcast as an audio only, beware. We also uh, are going to do some demos during this episode. Uh, we'll try to explain what we're showing, but if you want to get a full experience, check the YouTube one. But then still, the audio only version is available not only on YouTube, but also nowadays on Apple Podcasts and on Acast. So, welcome, Philip. Yes, indeed, uh, festive. So, I wasn't really sure if I was going to make it to the hairdresser uh, uh, this week before we did the recording, so I bought a Christmas hat. There was just one thing I forgot with the Christmas one, that it doesn't fit with the headphone. So, the joke is over now. You can see the hairdresser did a good job. And I'll, sw and I'll switch it back now. So, that was my disguise uh, uh, for now. So, yes, this that's, is our last. Ah, you got the small one. Yeah. That, yeah, that's that's not a hat. That's for making a ponytail. And my daughter got one that makes her, I don't know. It doesn't really look Santa y. It's, uh, and you tried it on the microphone, but that didn't work as well. Oh, yeah. And I've got some <laughs> Christmas bells, of course, at the, in the background. Nice. So. Yeah, we're celebrating Hanukkah anyway, but. Um, yeah, we're all in for everything. Yeah. So theme for this podcast, I think, is unwrapping presents and unwrapping presents. Uh, we didn't have that much time for this uh, in our last one or two episodes. So I suggest that we do a lot of unwrapping, nice add-ons uh, for the end of the year, uh, uh, Plow Newsroom podcast recording. So we're going to talk about add-ons. And yeah, and we have an excuse, a great excuse to talk about add-ons because we're relaunching, pl not we, but the whole community is pl relaunching Plon.org and to launch a Plon website. What do you need? Add-ons. Add-ons, exactly. So, uh, Philip and me have been helping a bit. Uh, I wasn't feeling too well, but I plugged along. Uh, I, I trudged along on Saturday uh, when there was the first sprint. So last uh, weekend, we had the first uh, sprint with community people coming together to work on the new plone.org. Uh, I looked a bit on Saturday. You helped a bit on Sunday. And we thought it would be indeed a good idea to use the uh, plone.org uh, uh, renewal uh, uh, to also demonstrate uh, upcoming features of Plone 6 and also discuss some new developer features that we're still experimenting. People are trying to uh, build a replacement for build out, for example. Uh, we're going to look at a pip based install and we can all, all hang these nice add ons and uh, uh, things in the tree of the plone.org website renewal. <laughs> yeah. So the, the basic strategy for the Plone Org renewal, the, the whole the whole thing is managed by our very own uh, Riku Pekka Oksanen uh, from the University of uh, Juvaskala in Finland. And he's doing a great job of cat herding the developers to uh, actually do what we need done. Um, and the, the idea that uh, we agreed on is to eat our own dog food, obviously not do a typo three website for Plone, but do a Plone website and use the newest Plone that is Plone 6 with the Volto front end, uh, the React based Volto front end and uh, use not too much custom code and add ons and stuff, but keep it simple and as out of the box as possible. Obviously, as we'll see later, this isn't uh, helping to make the front page, for example, look excellent. Uh, so we need at least a couple of add-ons to make it um, look uh, more fancy. And we need a couple, there are a couple of add-ons in the old side that I'm gonna discuss as well. Okay, so um, first backend maybe. Um... Philip, we uh, we, ha we we managed to uh, to not talk about uh, an add-on uh, you especially worked a lot on and I helped and used a lot uh, during the summer. We did uh, both we did both two presentations on the add-on at the PloneConf, but we managed to keep it out of the Plone newsroom podcast. Uh, but it's all yours. Collective export import. Talk away. Yeah. Um, so Plone Org has been around since Plone One. Uh, and it's been migrated in place ever since. 
uh, which is a major effort, and it would indeed be possible to do a in-place migration of the current Plone.org website, which is running Plone 5.1 on Python 2, obviously, because only Py uh, 5.2 starts to support Python 3. Uh, but since uh, we've written uh, collective export import and it's proven such proven to be such a effective and quick tool to do migrations, we decided to uh, migrate ex um, Plone.org using uh, export import. Still, the content is exactly the same, and we keep all the data. And I'm gonna um, share my screen and show show a couple of uh, a bit of the code that we're using for the export. I'm not gonna start the export in this case. I'm gonna show you the import, but that's uh, the more important, uh, yeah. the more interesting part. Yeah. Just as, so, a, as a quick note, Philip, you released 1.3 of collective export import uh, this week with a few yes. nice nice updates. I mean, uh, uh, we had uh, some feedback in the past on the on the on the add-on like hey, this isn't working, that wasn't working, but then we were adding all kinds of small bug fixes and there wasn't really a new release. So there's a new shiny release of 1.3 with all kinds of small updates and fixes and also a few things that uh, you also inspired that you needed to finish for this export to work. Yeah, that's true. Um, while you were talking, I actually start, uh, f started up the uh, the old website, so I'm gonna uh, show that anyway. Um, hang on, I'll move it over to the other screen, and I'll like, for those who are only listening, I'm uh, looking at a local copy of Plone.org, um, and you see the Plone.org website. It's a local version on running on local host, as is exactly what you see when you go to Plone.org. And um, I'm not yet logged in. I'll do that quickly. Oh, shouldn't use that. Uh, That's the login uh, as an administrator. Yeah. I created a password for me, uh, only for me. So, and then on the website, uh, on the main URL, that you see that I just enter a new um, um, URL called uh, export underscore content. And um, I had an I here, and this renders a form that shows you all the content that is in the site. And you see there's like 3,127 uh, add-ons, which come from a uh, outdated add-on listing that is not public anymore. There is 293 foundation members. There are a couple of forms, and there is uh, there are like uh, 3,900 pages a thousand news items and stuff like that and there's basically at the bottom there's a button that you can click uh saying export and once i click it it creates a bunch of files and stores them on the file system and has all the exports uh exported content but i'm actually not using that i'm moving the browser away uh, because I wrote, so this is all the code that there is, there's nothing custom. So if you look at the code I had created as I usually do a subclass of the export content browser view to add customizations if I need them, it turned out for the uh, Plone.org website, I didn't need any customizations for the export. The out of the box uh, customize uh, export worked fine for all the content that is there to migrate. The only thing I just added here is to constrain it to the content that I actually yeah. want to migrate so that uh, I don't accidentally export stuff. Uh, I don't know, these form fields that I don't want. Yeah. But this is just... Um, yeah, but this is also yeah, something we've been candy. we've been working on uh, over the year. Like uh, when uh, collective export import moved from 1.1 to 1.2, 1.3, uh, you, you you started the project with uh, a number of hooks uh, that you could uh, patch and change things. But meanwhile, we've added all I think most of the exceptions that we ran into for a default Plone 4 site and a default Plone 5.2 site to the default package. So I'm not surprised that you don't need to overwrite. Uh, 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 that ones uh, uh, that many use uh, exceptions anymore because we've added the most of the default stuff now into uh, the main add-on. 
One other that thing, I, I got a question from somebody after my, my uh, presentation. It said, look, but uh, you said you needed to install uh, uh, the add-on, but I can't really install it. Uh, and then I had to explain, look, there, there are two things. So you, the only thing you have to do in the source blown website is, is add the add-on, the Python code, to your installation. But you don't need to go to the add-ons control panel and actually yep. install extra thingies. And that's also all done on purpose because we don't want you to change any of the code or change any anything on the content database while you're running the tool. So what Philip just showed by, okay, go to add, add, uh, export content. You can do that in any source blown site. And the whole purpose of the add-on is that you can edit, you can add the add-on to the source site by making the code available, but it doesn't change or register or, or modify anything in your content database because you own, you want to keep, of course, your source old website, uh, uh, uh as stable as possible. That's true. You can't install it. It's just not there. You can't find it unless you add a override package with its own browser layer and profile, uh, which we don't need in this case. The, the custom code yeah. that I just showed is in the plone.org package. There is a plone.org plone core package, I think, in the old site. Uh, but export import does not only export content. This is like it just does that. I click the button and I have it all in one JSON file. It also exports relations, uh, translations, which we don't have because uh, the Plone org is English only, uh, members like Plone users, uh, all local roles, like if you're an owner of a page because you created that, or if you have custom local roles for, you, for special groups, for special folders, uh, the default pages for containers, uh, the object position and parent, so the ordering of items in a folder, uh, any comments and even portlets. So, uh, and to, to not have to click like eight buttons, I wrote a small browser view called export all that runs all these exports, uh, one by one by one by one. So here, for example, is export ordering. Ah, it runs nice. the export ordering browser view gets all the data and uh, saves it as a JSON file into the file system. So I have a folder in the end that has all the uh, exported uh, data in instance. So here are a couple of JSON files. And now I'm switching over to the new site, which is actually way more interesting, has more code and uh, has there's a lot more to talk about. So this is the new repository for uh, for Plone.org. Um, Eriko and uh, Jens and uh, I guess these two have done most of the work on on the package uh, itself. It is a mono repo, so there is only one repository containing the back end and the front end. Um, if you follow the mastering plone training at any point in the last two years, you, this might look familiar. There's a folder called backend and there's a colder, folder called frontend. Um, also, so the front end, also in yeah. the, the photo, uh, uh, made repository also has this, uh, uh kind of setup. So the whole photo development it, is API. Yeah, but it, the, the folder is named API because that's yeah. the backend. So it's a bit technical developery, but the, the photo repo also has this backend built in and it's a nice, uh, 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 way to keep the front end and the backend, uh, uh, synchronized without thinking too much about different, uh, release versions or whatever. Uh, but we'll get to that later. So this is indeed the new plone.org uh, repo that was created by Erico. Uh, the interesting part of this repo is that it's no longer using build out uh, to build there's the plone no build 6 build. CFG. There's no build out yeah. CFG, there's no ZC build out. Uh, there's a new, uh, it's still alpha. Uh, uh, Jens is very careful about it, but he did some great work to, to jump back to a tool that's been available on most uh, operating systems, uh, Unix operating systems since the 1970s, 1980s, make, make files. So he has been studying some uh, make file setups and we now have an MX dev uh, uh, environment as uh, Jens has named it, that just uses a make file to do the basic uh, uh, plone backend setup. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I'm not going to go through that uh, make file. I guess uh, Jens should do his, his own podcast or talk about that, but there's the make run. Uh, thing that I'm going to run soon. And there's also a make install that installs the whole site. The main thing is since we're not using build out, we're using pip. Pip is by, by the way, if you don't know that pip is a uh, self-referencing acronym because it's called, uh, it says pip installs, uh, Python. Uh, 
which uses pip. So it's uh, recursive. Um, so it uses pip and constraints txt um, to uh, requirements and constraints and something and so some more stuff to install the whole of Plone since uh, six zero. Uh, alpha 2, we have working a working constraints file that actually pulls in all the Plone dependencies with a basic, basically what you do is pip install Plone. It's just a wrapper around that to pin all the right versions and uh, allow you to uh, extend it with add-ons. Because, for example, there is a tool that Jens wrote called uh, mxdev. Um, and it uses a sources ini file and reads that. And what I did, my little contribution to that is just I added collective export import as a source checkout. It's, this replaces Mr. Developer um, um, as, as a tool for developers and makes this package uh, available to the back end as in sources as a development package. So it can actually, it uses this code and not something nice. in the pip cache or wherever. Yeah. And if you, if you want to add an add on that, that not doesn't need a source check out, then the main uh, use for pip is that you go to the requirements. So the requirements txt is the way you can list add ons that are already released on pypy.org, uh, uh, with a, with a stable version. That is true. Mm. So, and to show that it's actually working, um, I moved over a, uh, a terminal to the repository, uh, to the to the screen share, and I go to back end and say make run. I don't do make install, but uh, that would just do the install. So this just starts up Plone and updates the install, uh, the checkouts, if uh, there were some changes, but I didn't do any changes, and it's just running. So my Plone instance, uh, I Earlier, I had the old one uh, there. Now I have the the new one. So localhost 8080. Um, you're seeing something. We're talking about that later, but let's just jump ahead a bit. Uh, if you've seen the the front page of Plone, there used to be a button like show your front page, your Plone site if you have one, and there is a create new Plone site, and there was an advanced button, and now there's a third button. At least one, if you have Plone.volto installed, there is a new button called create Plone classic site or create classic Plone site, and it creates uh, it. Depending on which button you press, you get Plone uh, Volto installed or not, which means you get folderish content types and stuff uh, and so on. So I didn't do anything here. Um, I just created an empty empty Plone site. Uh, here I already imported the whole content, but I'm going to show you the import underscore content uh, browser view. It, it's exactly the same as in the export um uh, version just called import and again you have a form where you can select uh, files that are in the file system in this case there's uh, only one of them makes sense because it, we have the whole site in one json file or you can upload a site and then you can select uh, to do a commit every uh, x number of um, x uh, number of items to store. Number of items. Yeah. So we, we ran into and this. And I see I'm, I'm, missing, I'm missing a feature. Uh -oh. um, say something and I'll do a update on the fly. Yeah, so so interesting part is uh, Philip just showed the drop down. There's one very big JSON file in there, which is all the actual content, all the content items, folderish and non-folderish. Uh, that was a feature we added so that you don't have to export all items in one. Uh, but then the metadata, which is also other JSONs there, uh, you can apply them when the content is there. You can, for example, apply uh, the position in parent, the roles, and the other stuff, and then you set the metadata back on the already imported items. The uh, do a commit after each number of items uh, feature is very handy because if you have a very large, uh, 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 a very large content uh, uh, database that you want to import again, uh, then on the import process, it starts to fill up your temp folder. And Philip found out somewhere last month that if he does a commit every thousand items, the temp folder gets flushed. Uh, and that's very uh, convenient when you do an import. Say you have to import uh, 20 gigabytes of uh, uh, binary data, uh, then it previously would mean if there was no commit at all in between, uh, you could also end up with a temp folder of 20 gigabytes, which is a bit inconvenient uh, on many uh, today of today's servers. So, Philip, did you add your feature again? 
Or should yeah, I continue I, talking? I just, I just did a git pull on uh, export import and the new feature is now there. Uh, it because now in the new version we can decide how to handle existing content. Ah yes. And uh, there's like a there's a reason uh, I did this for actually two projects because I made errors in two different projects in Plone Org. Um, by default, when you have Plone Volto installed or Plone, maybe it's from from the Plone Org website. I actually didn't check that. Uh, documents don't have the rich text behavior anymore. So Plone dot rich text, the behavior that he, that is used to render uh, rich text fields in documents is not available on documents, which, okay, how, how then would you store text in a hmm. document? Obviously, um, in Volto blocks, because there is, I think it's called Volto.blocks or Plone.VoltoBlocks, or I don't know, something like that. And you get the uh, Slate or uh, the Volto Pastanaga editor and uh, it stores the data in these in blocks in a custom field in a different field because the rich text editor uh, stores html it has it looks completely different and uh, this is a, this is a to do it's going to be a to do to migrate to that so what i did is i forgot to enable the rich text uh, behavior on all documents. So when I imported the data to the new Plondoc org uh, test database that I have here, uh, all the documents had uh, no text because when deserializing data, the REST API checks if there is like actually a field in the schema for that's called text and it holds the, the, the right uh, kind of data. And if there is no field in the schema, uh, then nothing will be imported. So it was all in the JSON file, but it was completely ignored. A bit, so, a bit un un inconvenient that you have news items without text. <laughs> well, news items have text, documents don't. Oh, all the documents were dropped. Yeah, and then you can yeah. do, then you can start all over. But you didn't want to do that, right? Yeah, I did. I didn't want to do that. Um, for Plonor, it wouldn't would have been a problem because the import just takes I don't know three minutes or so. It's not that big. Uh, but I had a, I have a really big site, and I need to import that on a on a client server, and it runs for eight hours because it does a, a ton of stuff and has over two hundred thousand items in there, and I forgot to export the images from news archetypes news items properly so my json file didn't have that so i wrote that and when you select update now you can just upload a new json file that i created fresh for plone org i did that and also for the other project i did that and only that only con for the other project it only contained the news items including the bi uh, the binary data for the for the images and since it only updates uh, items that or uh, it then if it finds the item it updates that with the data in the json file and bam the images were suddenly there so here um before i show you the result i'm showing you the the, the code because there's a bit more custom code in the Plone Org import content thingy. It's basically just defaults for import types, but there is one item that has a uh, that has a effective date that is before the um, uh, expiration yeah, date. Yeah, I had that the same yeah. in the summer. Yeah, we already had there was a ticket on it as well. Yeah. Yeah, and that then fails during import. So I just thought, let's just hack that, move it a month uh, earlier uh, because I'm lazy. And there uh, are a couple of items that have no title. I fixed them. There are a couple of items that have the wrong language or no language. Uh, and there's like, uh, there is mosaic pages with a layout uh, as, as uh, a layout view from mosaic as set as their layout and I just drop these to render them as default folders or documents since Mosaic is not available in uh, Volto and is replaced. Okay, so Philip, show us the results. Yeah. I'm hurrying you, you up a bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm talking too much. Uh, so exciting. So this is the final site. It um, Obviously, it doesn't look exactly as the old one because the old one has a mosaic on it and has a theme. This doesn't, but it has all the content going back to 2002 where there is a news item uh, that Plone or Plone 098 was released. Oh, yeah. 
it was written by uh, Alan Runyon and published in fe February 12, 2002. And it's still there and it has all the data and I can edit that and I can see who, who wrote that and who chain, who, who, who the tags are there, uh, the publishing date, uh, all the settings are there. There is actually uh, the short name is there and everything. So that's really nice. I have all the data that I want. Uh, there's also our newsroom website is also there and you see that also the, the YouTube links and images, everything works, uh, since we're cleaning up the HTML when we're moving it from the old, uh, from JSON and into the new site. <laughs> Obviously, this is Plum Classic that I'm showing there in Volto. This would look pretty bleak at the moment because as I said, rich text is not rendered, uh, mm. in, in the current setup. But it's um, Philip. And, it's still it's still yeah. a thing. I, I mean, if you look at this, I mean, there are not few CMSs that can say, "Look, if you were uh, hanging uh, hanging in with us, you were uh, you have been able to migrate version one of the CMS to now almost version six, and we've always had a steady upgrade path. And even now, what you see that we uh, we do eat already our own dog food that we keep our own website running this long, and we're we're not in the business of throwaway websites. It's not that uh, when we deliver a plone website that after two or three years, we say, oh, well, if you want to upgrade to the next version, throw away all your content and start over. I mean, that happens a lot because uh, uh, what you see with larger organizations is that they get a lot of stale content and they will have to edit the stuff anyway after three or four years. But it's not a technical or, or something that uh, uh, the CMS does to you. We've been able to upgrade uh, Plown websites from version one to version six. So, um, Philip, you show now the back end. Uh, let me show. There's, uh, there's one, one more thing. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to show that, but I also wrote a import all browser view that runs all the imports. It reads all the files, runs all the custom imports, users, the Zob root users, and stuff like that. If you're interested in that, go to the uh, repository for plone.org. It's in the plone, uh, plone organization. It's just called plone.org. Everything is in there. Okay. To show you a bit more, what, so Philip just showed uh, a Plone six, uh, uh, so a Plone six uh, 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 backend with all the content migrated using collective export import from the Plone.org website. And what he said, of course, it looks a bit uh, uh, well, not bleak, but it's the basic core Plone uh, uh, view that we have over there. Um, let me show you now a bit what you can also follow along with if you uh, look at the Plone.org. So this is the repo on Plone, Plone.org, uh, and this is the repo that Philip just used and is working now on to in the back end here. Uh, and he showed the requirements and the sources. This is the back end where also some importing stuff is now added. I'll talk a bit more about the other part, the front end. So I have installed uh, the back end. It's over here running uh, here, serving on 8080. But at the same time, in the same repo, I have switched to the front end folder and in the front end folder, uh, there's a photo installation. And I've also set yarn start here and it now runs. And of course, this is not the back end with all the content from Philip. This is just an empty uh, uh, setup, but you can use this very uh, uh, nicely for yourself if you want to experiment a bit with photo. So here is the photo front end. And as you can see here, oh, well, you're not done yet. Ah, you're still running. Haha. <laughs> so it's a very nice way to to demonstrate and look a bit uh, at what Volto has to offer. And something I noticed is that if you would now start a Volto uh, website from out of the box, you can add some pictures, but you can't see all the uh, the layouts I've done here. If you look at the keynote uh, from Timo uh, from the Current Plan Conference, where he showcases all the nice editor things you can do. There were already a few add-ons installed in there, uh, which are not by default yet in the, um, uh, in, in the, in the uh, core photo. So what, what do you have to do? So let's say I've added two uh, extra add-ons in here. If I now go to a block and I say plus, there's not only, you know, there's for example a grid and I can now insert a grid block here. How can you enable this if you want to test drive photo? It's quite simple once you know it. Um, here is my photo uh, site running. This is the editor where we have both the back end. Uh, that was the back end. This is the front end. To add an add on, you only need to do uh, one thing, and that is look up the add on information. 
And you have to add two things to the package JSON. Package JSON is the kind of sources in the and requirements takes they uh, from the back end, uh, but then the, the front end uh, JavaScript one. So I've now have added two add ons Volto Slate as default. You can find this from the Volto Slate uh, README on uh, the repo. And I've also added the kit concept Volto Block Script one uh, to add the block script. This to uh, these four lines, or actually two lines, add the add-on to the front end. Still, you need to also download and install them. And that one is done a bit further down here, which is called the dependencies. So here you see Kit Concept. So is the Slate editor going to be the default in Plan 6? Yes, so that's why I added it, because it's going to be the default one. They're still working yeah. on it. It's not in the alpha yet, but you can very easily add it like this. So what you then do uh, once you're here is like uh, yarn install. Uh, for example, photo slate. When I do this, it's already there. Uh, uh, oh yeah, and I'm always doing add, but you should do add. So this one adds it. Oh yeah, and it shows a, f a small warning now. You have to add minus v because there's some thingy with the workspace. So Yarn now download, downloads the add-on from NPS, npmjs.com and inserts it here. And it also updates the, the line here. And then you add the uh, two add-ons also here. And by the way, all the information, like I said, uh, this is the introduction of EEA Photo Slate, where you can find uh, how you should use. And here's, the, for example, the instructions on how you should add it to the uh, add-ons. And the same information is also for a concept available on npmyes.com. Here's the Photo Blocks Grid. And obviously, there's a training on Plone uh, Volto add-ons. Um, yes, but that's basically that about well. adding already developing add-ons, and it explains it in much more detail. Uh, I just wanted to put this in the podcast here to show yep. people that it's very easy to to add with one or two uh, uh, add-ons line and, and six lines. Uh, uh, you can set it up. And with the new uh, Plone.org repo now being worked on by people to improve Plone.org, it's the ideal uh, uh place where you can uh, uh, just lurk and see uh, how people are, are working with Volto in the new setup. So then it's just... So there's, a, there's a long list of Volto uh, add-ons and changes that Rico Pekka uh, came up with and that he, he likes. But we need to be careful that we don't, uh, don't blast the site with too many add-ons. It makes it harder to maintain if add-ons are not, maintain, uh, not updated anymore. So we, we need to... Uh, not uh, try to not fulfill every wish that we actually have. Yeah, so that's the that's the the thing that there are already a lot of add-ons uh, or blocks, block add-ons and add-on photo add-ons being uh, having have been developed over the last two years. And uh, yeah, we now need to to figure out uh, in the community which add-ons are we going to install by default. So now I've added those two add-ons, and what I can now do uh, is reloading, and now I can create much more flexible things. So I've created a small demo here with with pictures. I can just say here, uh, uh, and there's also, for example, the table add-on. So I'll just re-demonstrate it here. Uh, the basic grid here says three columns, but then it's empty and you need to add blocks. Uh, there's also a shortcut here for the teaser grid or the images grid. The images grid does exactly the same. Correct me if I'm wrong for a later podcast, but then it already fills in the image for you here. And what you can now do is go to the... Uh, uh, Go to the finder and say, look, I want some had some images here. And I'll just drop this image here. I'll drop this image here. And I'll drop this image here. Look uh, at such that. Such a great user interface. Done. Just dropping images yeah. in. You can in, you can add more blocks. blocks. You can nice. remove them again. You can remove them here as well. Um, if you save them, you'll see responsively what happens. So it will just uh, -tum -pum -pum. So it will go to there. Um, you do see one of the limitations now, and that's also what, what people will, will still have to discuss. So what I did here, for example, is that I created um, two uh, uh, grid blocks, so three images and the images here. But as you can see, there are new rows. So what happens now if I do uh, a minification here, or smaller, responsive, you'll see that it... Yeah starts a bit funny because now you get first the three images and then you get the three headlines above here it does work you see a news item and here another thing but that is because i did something else here this is not an images block but this is a teaser uh, grid and if you look more carefully at the teaser grid when i'll add one of those uh, 
you see you add references to content items. And what I just did here is select one and so the, say the title and description is automatically rendered. This is actually a con uh, this is a news item with a news item image and the news item introduction. And now it is functioning. So this is really a thing that you have to discuss in your projects. Uh, uh, what kind of editors uh, uh, do you expect that will start using the sites? Are there advanced editors that want to to control the whole grid or are they uh, really more communication people that say, look, I want to add news items and then just drop them in there and I should be finished. So I can now just go here, say, select a news item and say, I want this news item over there. Um, pum, pum. Uh, I'll choose image. Um, where did I do that? Oh, you're in the image block. Oh, no, you, no, no, hmm. I did this. The gods of the demo are not with us. Yes, they are, but I just had to pick. Yeah, there it is. You see, now it's it's the it's the image Excellent. with the text and the other stuff. So that's that's yeah. all the variation and the cool stuff you get with the uh, with with the blocks implementation system that you can devise your own blocks and and mix and match the blocks uh, to the to the audience that will that will really use the site. Just to yeah. really quickly show off the. Um, I think you this can one is the, so cool. Here, the, um, how many how many things do you want? You can set uh, compact more, <laughs> reduce complexity. This is so much user friendly. Oh, remember the things you had to do in Tiny MCE to get anything of a block of or a title running. This is so if, if, much if, more convenient. If you don't see th that uh, on your browser, it's a mouth watering user interface for uh, editing mm. tables mm. that Fred is showing. Also, look at this. Okay, I want to have smaller images. Sure. Or really small images. Stop! People will start uh, complaining that uh, we're, um, we're, we're, yeah. So this is so this is all all done they just by this now. is so yeah. Well, that's that's what we're for. I mean, we're trying to sell and show uh, and the new the new things that will happen in Plo. And This was all done by adding uh, again in the package JSON uh, uh, four or six lines. The dependencies are automatically done when you say yarn uh, uh, install photo slate or yarn install uh, the photo blocks grid. And the only other thing you'll have to do is to add these two uh, uh, lines here. And then you yeah. can, there's already, so this is already so much more powerful from the core photo thingy just by adding two, uh, two blocks here, two block add-ons. Volto out of the box is really powerful already. So I'm, I'm not complaining about core Volto sites. Um, there, but there are a couple of things that we need to do before Plone.org is done. We're planning to release it by World Plone Day, which is in, uh, April, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's in April. Uh, so we'll make an announcement of the correct date of, uh, World Plone Day, uh, in one of the next episodes. And we're going to relaunch Plone.org, uh, by that time. So, uh, two things are missing. One is obviously content, uh, updated content structure using these add-ons, uh, to create beautiful landing pages for various, uh, audiences and various, uh, content, uh, various types of content. Uh, not content types, but uh, pages just showing, for example, the community or the board or whatever, uh, doesn't all have to be text only. And uh, a second thing that is still missing is the migration from the rich text um, content to Volto blocks. Uh, there is uh, there are two packages that we're evaluating at the moment. There is one npm thingy that is actually part of Slate, uh, Plone Slate. We mentioned and, it the last time. Uh, yeah, uh, that, uh, but you, the problem or the problem, the challenge, the extra challenge there is it where it uses the the the, the Slate code, but that's all JavaScript. So you need to yeah. have some JavaScript node thing running in the background. Yeah, or you yeah, or you run it after um, after. Uh, the migration is run and then, I don't know, do some stuff there. Uh, the, the other option is to do something in Python, which I would prefer because I'm a Pythonista, but, um, I, I actually don't have such a strong opinion. Something Python would be easy to in include in export import. So when you're importing content and you have a Plonvolto enabled and then you can easily, 
uh, check a box and say, okay, everything that is rich text is now uh, Voto blocks and it blah, 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 populates your site and you can edit it in the uh, Slate editor. That would be really nice. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to no help, work. yeah, Philip, if you want to help out with the blown.org uh, 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 renewal uh, uh, that we're, the community is working on, the next print announced by Rika Pekka was on, is, is on the 15th of January, which is another Saturday. Yeah. And next uh, year. this certainly a follow-up on Sunday. So January 18th, <coughs> uh, I'll, I'll be there and try to finish whatever needs to be finished with the migrate, uh, export import. I'm trying not to dabble with content itself. I'm not really good at that. So, so we're way over time what we estimated to show on Plone.org. So let's continue. It's exciting. It's exciting. I think we're that's also building a site. I don't think we'll 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 have to keep ourselves to our our forty minute promise for the for the Christmas edition. Yeah, you can you can watch it in in different part uh, in different. Uh, Helping said uh, yeah, over the holidays. Yeah. So another very nice, nice big present. Uh, Plone mm -hmm. Six Alpha Two has been released. Uh, yes. Let's very quickly share my screen again to show you the announcement made by uh, one of our release managers, Maritz. You can find it on communityplone.org. Plone Six Zero Zero A Two released. Uh, he has some highlights there. There's also for people detailed, more detailed install instructions. Uh, either use it with build out or use it without build out. I'm now show, sharing my screen, just showing the page on communityplone.org. You will find it if you search for Plone 6 uh, Alpha 2 released. And there are also instructions here to install the front end if you don't want to use Classic UI, but you want to uh, because uh, test Because it's node. not shipped by default. If you install Plone 6, the front end is not auto installed. So it, there is no mono repo at the moment and you do yeah. pip install Plone and you get Volto as well. That is not the way how it works. That's, but the that documentation is, is really straightforward. And to create a Volto project, it's uh, uh, if you have a Node.js environment, it's like four, three or four lines uh, to to uh, start a, uh, the core uh, uh, React front end. So yeah. those instructions, you can very easily test drive uh, Plone 6 Alpha 2. I think Alpha 3 should hopefully have uh, uh, also embedded the ES6 uh, 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 modules update for the classic UI uh, backend. And I really hope that uh, by Alpha 3, uh, we have a packaging system for the front end so that it's all in, in one system. But for the time being, you'll have to run a few extra commands to test drive uh, uh, the React front end. Yeah, there is uh, there is one breaking change uh, for add-on developers or people who use add-ons. Uh, we replace Z3Z auto include with Plone auto include, and the uh, ZZML statement called include dependencies is no longer supported in Plone uh, six zero zero alpha two. Uh, it has been discouraged for a couple of years now. Uh, so just rip it out, or there is documentation how to like mock something so you don't get any error messages. Um, um, and still leave it in if you have add-ons that don't have an updated release for that. Uh, there's another change which is nice um, on if you are using, uh, if, if you create a new Plone site, I already showed that, uh, there is a new button that then creates a Plone site with Plone Volto and uh, the, the correct settings uh, for content behaviors and folderish content if you use Volto. Uh, but there's something missing and we're really waiting for that. And we really hope it's going to drop before it's going to be merged before Christmas. I'm not expecting a new release before the end of the year, but maybe Moritz will surprise us there. Uh, so what's not yet merged is the ES6 update of the JavaScript story yeah. in Plone. They are working hard on it. I've been, I talked to uh, Mike uh, the day before yesterday and they were sprinting yesterday. But there are a couple of things, mostly control panels, which use custom JavaScript that still needs to be updated. But they're mostly done, but they want to be really done, done and not almost done uh, before you merge, uh, they merge it. Yeah. So other news, Philip, community news. Uh, I think the last time when we recorded our podcast, there was a board meeting where they were going to decide who is going to uh, have which roles in the new board. Um, 
Yeah, congratulations. Our new president is Donald, no, Erico Andre. Um, and uh, Jens Klein uh, from Austria is vice president. Andy Lieb is secretary. Uh, it's male only. What's wrong here? Uh, so, yeah, Chrissy, uh, she was, used to be the president last time she stepped down. We said that last time. Thanks a lot to her. Yes, we thanked uh, but her there is also last time. New, new member yeah. Again. Exactly. So Kim Paulison from the uh, University of Leuven, uh, where she yes. works a long time, a Plone user. Uh, I, I talked with her like already many years ago and she was still like a bit coordinating, but I think she's a full uh, head on developer herself as well. Now she might want to she contradict is. that, but she had a very nice talk at the Plone conference where she showed off uh, use of tiles and mosaic and other things. So she's uh, stepped on the board and uh, welcome, Kim. Yeah. Excellent that you uh, volunteer. Usually you, you get voluntold in the Plon community. <laughs> uh, there's also more news. Uh, the Plon conference is uh, almost a month, was a month ago. And the videos from the talks of the Plon conference are slowly appearing on YouTube. They're uh, at a rate of about two videos each day. If you're following the Plone, um, Plone on Twitter, um, then you get notifications for that. There is a uh, a playlist uh, in from by Plone uh, on YouTube. We are adding the link to the show notes um, where you can f look uh, watch all these talks, including Fred's and mine uh, about uh, export imports. So you get a, get a full load of export import yeah. talks. So if you, but they are, I think that's that's not yet released, but it's gonna be out in the yeah. next couple of days. Yeah, so we'll slowly add uh, all the videos from the PlonConf will be added. If you get a bit of uh, uh, inspiration from the, the dark days uh, and, and like you look outside around 4.30 and it's already getting grayish and dark, uh, the Plon shop has some nice new Plon swag with Plon Conference t-shirts in the Noir edition. Um, usually it's it's not uh, such a cool thing to have completely black t-shirts with previous logos and things, but there are some very nice uh, uh, versions now with uh, with the dark the dark dark mode on our on our plone t-shirts. Um, do be a bit uh, uh, notice that if you order it from the current plone shop, they are still working on having a more efficient uh, a customs uh, uh, setup. So f few people found out, uh, or actually most people found out that if they were ordering stuff outside the UK, where the uh, uh, the printing shop is now, uh, uh, where the print the main printing shop is located, T Mail, uh, that you get to add some new customs uh, to have. You have to pay some extra uh, customs duty depending on the on the country where it's shipped to. But t has already uh, promised us that they are working on, at least in Europe, uh, also a printing facility in Europe. So then for Europe, the, those costs will fall away. And I assume that they will uh, surely do that for other uh, markets as well. Yeah, really with the Barcelona one, that's nice. I lost my yeah. I lost my my gray original one, probably because it's gray and I put it on the on the wrong uh, sorting uh, thing and it it, uh, it disappeared two or three years ago. Yeah, it's, so whoever's listening to this podcast, if you ever organize a plone conference, um, make the t-shirts black. So <laughs> all all conferences where the t-shirts are not black, the conferences were excellent, but the t-shirts, they're just second class. I'm really <laughs> sorry about that. Um, the conference worked great, but even the Barcelona one, it just looks awesome in black. Uh, by the way, this is from the uh, migrated Plon website. So there's a news item on Plon.org that showcases these, uh, these, this information. It's all migrated. It's not published yet. Yeah. Uh, on a, yeah, on a uh, sadder note, uh, tomorrow uh, is uh, the... I, I know that because I'm thinking about uh, him almost every day. Uh, the uh, the death of Max Jakob, uh, one of the uh, our uh, community members and a dear friend of mine, uh, is has his first anniversary uh, tomorrow uh, on Saturday, first uh, uh, December the 11th, and there is a uh, news item on on that. We had that last year, and I accidentally <laughs> ran across that. So there. Are th so this is a mix of uh, a memory and uh, technical demo, and I think Max would have appreciated that to show that uh, all these images are easily migrated and that they show him and uh, other people from the Plone community in uh, various conference places, San Francisco, Tokyo, 
Uh, this uh, at the bottom right is, I think, the bar in uh, the hotel in Bristol, um, more San Francisco, and I don't know where that is. Uh, Barcelona, maybe I don't know. And yeah, this is the, the uh, there is a picture of me and Max where he looks really young, and that's at the Plon conference with a K, the one with a K, where we had lightning talks, and everyone who gave a lightning talk was. Uh, not forced, was allowed to have a uh, shot of single malt whiskey, which uh, just enforces our uh, recommend, uh, our standing as a drinking community with a software problem. Yeah, so this is a really, I, I, it shows like we're a global community uh, of people like, like Philip and me and many others. You've, you see the, us online and we're now, now like, like visible because we do this prone podcast. But there, uh, there's a lot of, has been and there is and there will be a lot of prone uh, activity locally done in countries, on continents, only for universities. And there's a lot of uh, volunteers and community members supporting those local communities and you might not always see them online actively on communityplone.org all the time or hacking away and doing commits on, on their GitHub repos or or, or doing talks uh, every uh, chance that they, they get that. And Max was one of those people that were silently in the background doing a lot of support for especially uh, the German speaking uh, 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 countries. Uh, he was working in, in, in Munich for the, for the university and I, I also happened to, to speak uh, German uh, quite well. So I, I, I saw him a few times at conferences, but then when I was at the Plon Tagung in 2020, uh, where he was, I think, he did last time, uh, he was also silently in the background organizing everything. He was doing the catering. He was doing the, 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 the breaks in between. He was doing everything, and he was just sitting there and then happily looking around when everything was going on smoothly and nobody noticed him but by that time everybody was of course noticing him yeah so he, yeah. he will really be missed we miss him very much and our uh our hearts go out to his wife um who is struggling with this so um okay uh so, I to something completely different yes um, follow up like we're talking all times and sometimes things come back and collective taxonomy has come back for the Second or third time now, so a quick update. What is there new on Collective Taxonomy? Um, so in uh, Collective Taxonomy, has um, we got the nice emails that Collective Taxonomy gets uh, new features. Uh, I'm going to quickly show one. The most uh, the, uh, It's been waiting uh, <laughs> to be released a while. I'm not sure if it's merged yet, but I'm... God, it looks terrible. So, by the way, since we've been talking about export-import, this is a crazy example of export using export-import. I just, to showcase the uh, this feature, okay, I first showcase the feature. So, this is tax, uh, collective taxonomy is an add-on that you can use to manage uh, keywords and you can add new taxonomies and they are available as behaviors on fields. If you want that, um, that, I'll just create a new one called bar um, and save that. And now we have two and there's the foo, uh, f there's a field called foo and it has a couple of options. Uh, one is option one and the other is option two or another option and it works multilingual. So in German it is erste option and zweite option and I can edit that. And the new feature is that you can now uh, change the ID as well because in the back in the uh, the the ID is actually saved to uh, and as stored as an attribute on the object. The whole logic works as the in such a way that each taxonomy has its own uh, translation domain, which is pretty magic. And you can have like trees, like nested uh, nested taxonomies. Yeah, so that's it's always really what, what people think, like. Taxonomy, what's that for a uh, strange, probably Greek or, or Latin uh, word, and what does it? Taxonomies are just hierarchical keywords. Exactly. That's it. 
It's a hierarchy of keywords, and you could say, for example, I have uh, a, 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 a keyword vehicle, and under vehicle, I can have a, a car, bike, and train. And if I search for vehicle, I will also find the keywords that are uh, marked with train, bike, or car, or I can individually search for car. And the nice thing with collective taxonomy, it is, I think it gives you infinitely deep uh, uh, hierarchies if, if you want. You shouldn't, yeah, the, you shouldn't, but the, you, it supports it. Yeah, the user interface will probably blow up at some point, um, being unusable then. Yeah. If you have very long text, it also looks terrible, but it's it's still manageable. And the good thing is your clients or you can uh, change values on the fly. Uh, and you can even, if you need to update stuff, uh, you can update the IDs that are stored on the objects if you have some imported data and it doesn't fit with that yeah. or you just want it different and, that's a really and nice thing one... and also there's two more things that i want to mention <laughs> this is actually it's a react application so in plon classic there's a tiny react application that's the user interface for taxonomy and it's not working in volto yet but that's the thing that is coming um tiberio uh, told us that uh, they're working on a react uh, user interface for the taxonomy to manage your taxonomy so you don't have to go to the uh, classic backend and the second thing that was the second that thing. Was, that was the it's second working. Thing. Yeah, they're working now on Volto. And the thing I wanted to add is you should, um, you have in Plow Normal, uh, you have the sub subject or keywords. Uh, uh, the, the biggie also with uh, using something like collective taxonomy is that you have translation relations between uh, keywords. So if you have a German slash English website, if you would have normally keywords, you would have to have two sets of keywords in English and German. But if you tag something with a taxonomy, correct me if I'm wrong, Philip, it it stores them for both the it, it it stores them for both the translations, and that's something that normal keywords don't offer in Plum. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and here I just uh, showcased the feature that these are automatically enabled as uh, available as behaviors. I enable that for documents, so I can store these as the option, zweite option on a the user interface looks weird here but uh, nevertheless i can store the data and it's automatically translated and uh, uses the right thing uh, there the another other thing um since i mentioned that before i since i wanted to showcase taxonomy i needed some example data and i was too lazy to create it myself so i uh, i fired up plone uh demo plone org uh, which is a site we're managing and it auto creates content uh, and I didn't want to copy the content over. I just ran export import, dumped the content as JSON and re-imported the exported JSON into a empty, uh, empty, uh, fresh plant site. So export import, um, is, I don't know, it might even be good for cooking coffee. <laughs> Uh oh, so we're not allowed to talk about export import in the next four po four uh, podcast recordings. You you realize <laughs> that by not. now, like so we've yeah. now flushed everything from export import, and uh, we'll promise to our listeners uh, we'll do other. So uh, any other add-ons, Philip? Yeah, there are uh, two more add-ons. Uh, one that I uh, also want to show is something that uh, my colleague. Um, Thomas Shaw wrote is Collective Revision Manager. Um, I'm showing a uh, client side, a uh, local version of that, and there is in the um, in the control panel. I oh, obviously have to start that first. Okay, you'll fix that. Um, I'll tell something more I... about uh, Collective exp uh, uh, about Revision Manager. So this is one of those yeah, other hidden hidden gems for system administration. Um, I still consider it a bit of a, of a bug, but uh, a Plone site by default will uh, uh, remember revisions of the documents and the, the, text, the changes you do, and it will do it infinitely because by default the number of revisions is set to minus one. If you have a larger website, and, and most integrators know this, uh, set a de same default for the number of revisions to keep. If you didn't do that, then you can install Collective Revision Manager and you can actually prune and look at all the revisions that are stored in the content database base and you can still afterwards clean them up and this will this will really can drastically uh, 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 change the the storage you need uh, on uh, uh, on your content database especially on the on the file storage uh, because if you have been running a plant site for like for example five years and every change you made to the home page has been still stored as a revision uh, that can take up quite a bit of, of storage Philip show us 
Yeah, so this site has been relaunched recently, so there's not a lot of revisions in there because during the migration to Python 3, we dropped all the old revisions. But still, there are already 4,000 versions that are in the database. You can um, uh, manage the number of versions to keep uh, globally. Uh, and you can recalculate the statistics, but more importantly, you can list the histories and you can sort that and see which item has the most number of revisions. For example, there's one item that is obviously changed a lot, so it has 123 revisions, and I can click on uh, select that and say, okay, let's keep only the last 10 or just delete them all. There's also a nice button, delete orphans, that like re de removes all revisions uh, where actually there is no real content anymore. There used to be a bug, maybe it's still there, I'm not sure, uh, where uh, revisions are kept uh, and the cleanup that is happening when you delete something is not run or fails with some kind of error. I'm, I haven't looked into that that much. But this is a nice way to say, uh, to, to, to look at that. And if you click on the size and order that uh, the other way around, obviously, uh, you can see which items take up most of the space in the database as uh, as the whole of revision. So there's one, it's just text, but it's 1.9 megabytes for text. That's a lot. So I could just go there, select that and uh, purge these, uh, these revisions and bam, they're gone. This one is gone. And uh, you can obviously uh, click through the whole site. And yeah, that's really, you can select all uh, and then do, yeah, clean up. That's really nice. Yeah, it's a cool... Uh, it'll save, save a lot of uh, uh, space. Yeah, so that's one of those things that you wonder, like, should we add it to core? Shouldn't we add it to core? But it should, be, yeah, I think it should be there in some uh, in some uh, next version. Just like, for example, the relations uh, uh, view you uh, made and was in an extra add-on that it's now also coming to Plone 6 core. This is one of those yep. things that mm, we should consider maybe putting in the, in the real control panels by default. And another thing yeah. you mentioned, Philip, was collective impersonate. So this is the Plone has a very extensive permission system, a role system, where depending on which user on which user you log in and which permissions you have, uh, depending on the rules you have been granted, you see different things. But that makes it sometimes, as an admin or as a developer, a bit complicated when you get a report from someone like, "This isn't working for me. I don't. I I can't see this portlet. I can't edit this uh, uh, this feature. Uh, this control yeah. panel is gone." Ticket. It works for me. Works for me, exactly. So there's a nice little add-on called Collective Impersonate uh, that allows you, if you are already a, a, a manager, uh, I think, because otherwise it would be, of course, a security yes. risk. But if you are already a manager and you can do everything as a site as a manager, there's a new function that adds, uh, uh, that's added by Collective Impersonate. You can impersonate another user and inspect and see what they are seeing and then hopefully uh, uh, see the bug so you don't have to uh, close it as indeed. Yeah, you, you don't have to ask them, hey, what's your username? What's your password? Um, because as even as an admin, you, you can't see the passwords of other users in Plone, obviously. Uh, but using Collective Impersonate, just select the user from a list and uh, click on it. Uh, and then you're uh, logged in as that user. And when you log out, you're not logged out completely. You're logged in back uh, as ah, nice. a admin as you used to be before. <laughs> so it's really, really useful for debugging uh, if, if you have permission issues uh, on copies of production databases. Or uh, you can, if, since it's um, since it is constrained to admins, it is even safe to be installed on a production database. And we're planning to do that on a, a project uh, soon because the first level support, or no, maybe third or second level support, like the, the managers of mm -hmm. the site, they are real site managers. Uh, they then have the option on the on the on the on the production side to okay let me uh, I don't know uh, George tell me uh, what's your username I'll log in as you oh I see the same issue okay let's file a ticket uh, file a ticket or look at the trace back and stuff like that so that's um, it it is safe to use in production 
uh, shout out at us if we're wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is safe to use in production databases. I re- it's protected. I, I remember chatting with somebody on a, on a sprint two or three years ago where we had the same kind of requirements and there was a very old version of the add-on for Plone 3 or 4, but it hasn't been updated to do the same thing, but not impersonate a user, but see the site as a, in another language. And that's also something when you have a multilingual website, but your user is always showing, for example, English or, or or German, and you want to see the uh, the, the French or, or, or the Dutch version, uh, then that's also a bit difficult in Plone. And there, there was an add-on, but we then at the time discussed, oh, that would be might that might be cool to update and upgrade to Plone Five. But that was the impersonate, not for the user, but impersonate a, a, another uh, default language setting. But it's oh, yeah, that's like a second level. Let's uh, log in as George in Latvian, for example. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's that's not the. But the, maybe it should be added to impersonate. So um, yeah, one other thing, I I, I just found about uh, found out about this add-on uh, uh, this week, and I didn't wasn't able to test it yet. But uh, these kind of add-ons has a special place in, in my heart, and not from not always for joy, but sometimes also <laughs> from from anger or frustration. Uh, Mike Destappen uh, released this year a new uh, add-on to create PDFs from pages, and it's called Plone PDF Export. Uh, we've been there as well in the past for uh, quite a few clients that had this, had this requirement, but then they all had kind of different requirements. And what happened to us always, uh, so we uh, uh, Zest uh, created Collective uh, Send Us PDF, uh, but then the problem was always that after three or four or five years, or if you were really unlucky after two years, the underlying PDF library went out of support or broke down on a new OS version or whatever, and then you had to start all over again. Uh, Mike created uh, Plone PDF Export, and it's using the excellent and at the moment very well supported uh, Weezy Print uh, uh, library. So if you still have the requirement to export uh, or cr- to create PDF pages from from content items, uh, uh, check out uh, check out this add-on from Mike. Yeah, we use Weezy Print without this add-on in quite a lot of projects to easily create uh, PDF files. It is a really nice, uh, simple wrapper. It is, um, I'm pretty sure uh, Andreas Young would have a lot to say about that. It is certainly not not ready for, I don't know, a high, high performance and high quality uh, preprint. Uh, no, no, this is uh, this is not document generation. It's not yeah. document publishing. That's that's the, then exactly. if you if you need really document publishing uh, expertise and features, then you would have to look at uh, at the add-ons and and the system uh, Andreas Jung uh, has created. But this is for quick. For example, I had a requirement. Uh, we used to have a requirement, for example, to create. You have a recipe page and you want to export the recipe as a, as a PDF file because some people still like to store the, those on on their tablet, for example. And this is a this is a, 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 I think a great add-on for it. But I still I, I have to check it out myself. I only saw about it uh, this week. Uh, but as, as I said, I, I uh, was like, ah, PDF. There we go. <laughs> you sometimes you yeah. just have to build things. Yeah. Yeah, we, we use uh, Weezy Print, for example, on Dynajet.com to uh, create offer P- PDF with the offer uh, we have. All yeah, the but then the single page. Yeah. Yeah, and it's multi-page. It, you can create multi, multiple pages, and you can create a header and a footer and uh, like a page numbers, even if you want. So there's there's like it's basically print CSS that you that you that you extend, and it's a bit oh, uh, fiddly. But I, I didn't mean the PDF part. I did. I mean, mean the content part. So the, yeah, the, yeah, the thing that, the that pl- uh, yeah. Plone dot PDF export is not doing is being able to generate uh, a, a PDF document from a whole tree of content items. It's limited. I think for I read from the README, it's limited to one page or what you said, one uh, offer, for example, or one yeah, thing. Why would I want to do that? Why why would I export Plone dot org as one PDF? That is like insane, uh, insane requirement. Shall we reserve some time in the, net, in the next podcast? I have that <laughs> requirement multiple times and I can uh, tell uh, about uh, that for yeah, hours. Let's, let's make it a, a, a frequent uh, <laughs> session, insane re- client requirements. Uh, okay. I got a couple of those. So Philip, talking okay. about insane client requirements, we're almost uh, uh, on one hour, one five now. So I think we should really okay, wrap up. Wrap it up, yes. Um, 
thanks uh, to everyone who's listening for uh, feedback and suggestions, and we are really happy to receive them. Please keep them coming, either as comments on YouTube, uh, if you see us on the street, uh, write us an email, or use the form on our website, plon.org. I think I disabled that form, Philip, because we had oh. some spammers coming in. Okay, let's. Uh, there is a. Uh, we actually, that's an email. Uh, that's an email address there that works as well and is spam protected. Well, if you have something to say, probably know yeah. our emails anyway, yes. and uh, we got most of that by by email. So thanks for that. We're really uh, we love reading that, and um, we'll um, make some of that happen. For example, we're planning to do a short uh, feature interview with uh, a couple of things uh, maybe next year on Volto. So uh, we wish you uh, happy holidays. Happy uh, holidays. Which, whichever kind of holidays you're celebrating, uh, stay safe. Uh, I, I would personally inject get vaccinated. That's uh, I think that's a good idea. Um, and let's um, let's meet next year and uh, let's get it. Yes. I say Get so. Together. Get together again next year. So, yes. Philip, thank you very much. So, thank Excellent. you, listeners, and we'll hope to see and hear from you uh, again next year on our next podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.